Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Travis. Today we're going to do a quick fish room update. Well, I say quick, it'll probably be, you know, several minutes, but either way, I want to uh, kind of go through the setup, talk about some things that are going on and get into the printers and just kind of uh, give you guys a little bit of content since I haven't really uploaded over the last, I would say, week or so. Uh, just because uh, it's hunting season here in Pennsylvania. As you guys know, I do archery, and I've been trying to get out there and fill these tags. But it just hasn't worked out, and Friday I went out pretty far, and I ended up losing the front stabilizer to my uh, bow. So I think my archery season might be over. I do have my veterans hunt on uh, December 4th, which is really, really cool. I'm looking forward to that. A bunch of us vets get out there and uh, have a great time uh, uh, kind of harvesting some deer. So looking forward to that. But either way... Back to the video here. Uh, yeah, 300. It is pretty naked. So if you're new to the channel and you're wondering what the heck this tank is, it's not the live stream video. Uh, yeah, that fish right. I'm looking at. I'm looking. <laughs> I was looking at my hand and not the camera. Uh, that fish right there, Big Bertha. Uh, if you guys have been here for a while, you you've heard about her. You know about her. The destructor, the one and only. The I'm not going to the next tank because I'm going to a much larger, larger aquarium where I can continue to grow since I'm only halfway grown. Uh, just to think she's going to get two feet. That's uh, it's in insane. But either way, uh, can't really keep any coral in this tank. I've accepted it. I understand that's just the way things are. But I have gone over and uh, or gone in and added about six more frags to the tank. It's kind of hard to see because it's blue. But I have added some more coral to this tank when I did a water change. I did about 25-gallon water change on Wednesday. I'm going to do another, what is it? 30-ish, close, 30, 27 gallons. I'm going to do that today just to kind of get more detritus out of that tank and uh, also get some detritus out of the tub. So anyways, I went ahead and put some more coral in here, just some basic stuff, just move some things around in hopes of kind of making it look a little bit better than what it currently does. My plan is just to grow colonies to the point where she starts bumping into them and breaking them off and then trimming them down as much as possible to prevent the entire colony before from being pulled out of the rock structure and uh, just continue to do that. Now, I have moved pretty much all the coral that you guys see in that live stream video. I have little frags of that stuff on disc and tiles, which I'll attempt to show you here in a second. And I also went ahead and put a bunch of them in here, trying to just grow out things uh, in these two low boys in an attempt to still have those corals, but have them away from where they're gonna get fin slapped all day long. So. Yeah, the 300 is what it is. I've learned a ton of lessons with this tank. This entire setup, it, you know, is just, it's, it's the first part of my business. It's where I started the business, and I've learned so much on trying to uh, keep corals in stock and, and expanding my growth and fish, uh, what type of fish to put in my next tanks and what not to put in there, and coral placement and what corals not to put in, and all sorts of stuff. I mean, this this setup, this entire setup with the tub, uh, the uh, 300 and the low boys is all one tank uh, or one setup going to the sump here. I've learned so much, and I'm very thankful for that because I'm going to take all that information to the next build and hopefully avoid some of the major, major mistakes that I've made. And uh, I, if you guys want, I will cover a video on all those mistakes uh, for those of you who might be considering starting your own business, selling coral and whatnot. Uh, if you want that video, just let me know in the comment section. But either way, I have uh, I've learned a lot, and I'm just uh, I'm ready to move on to bigger and better things. But because of the housing market and some personal stuff going on in my life, I'm not able to uh, go out and build the house at the moment. So I am going to be waiting probably another year or so before we move that direction. So until then, we got the tub. I might move these, might get rid of these low boys and put an additional tub. I haven't decided yet since these guys are still working pretty well. Um, I just really like the tubs. And speaking of that, we can go over here. I really like these tubs. They're about eight foot by three foot by one foot. And uh, they just, I have my own overflow and everything. And they're just really nice. Um, and then throw some Nero 5s in there for flow. I got four Nero 5s. It's just really nice open space. And uh, it's great for, uh, for growing coral. They're perfect. I mean, you can make these stands however high you want. They just happen to work out that they're about I want a waist height, something like that. Let's see if I can even move it. So like waist, yeah. So I don't have to really do too much bending to get in there and work, and it's it's really nice. So, uh, yeah, I uh, I put the ring light on because my overhead light is not working out very well. But uh, let's see if I can show you guys anything else here. So when it comes to the fish room, you guys know that I used to grow a lot of plants underneath here and did phytoplankton. Phytoplankton I haven't really grown in a while just because I got to get a new culture of it and kind of start over. It is on my list of things to get going. But uh, I'll probably just kind of revamp one of these areas down here and put the phytoplankton back in stock and kind of get going with that. 
because it was really popular. I just haven't been able to kind of get around to it. Other than that, we have box storage and all sorts of stuff, which reminds me I have to order some more boxes. Um, but yeah, so we do our storage up there. Of course, we have our uh, water container. Uh, this is where I make salt water. And basically, when I ship a bunch of coral, I will turn off the ATO. And then once I'm done shipping coral, I'll come over here and turn this valve, uh, which is pre-mixed salt water, kind of dumps in and just replaces all the coral water that was removed that day. And uh, also when I do water changes, it's basically the same thing. I have a pump in there that mixes everything up. And then, uh, yeah, when I'm ready to just replace the water I took out during the water change, I turn it and it goes right in. So you guys know I have uh, Radeon 6 XR15s. Um, I have dialed them back down to about uh, 60% uh, because they were they were roasting some corals in here, especially my nutrients got a little low between high light and low nutrients, which happens kind of often in this setup with, all, with the coral going out. Uh, it does roast SPS. So I dumped them, I, I, I dropped them down, I dumped them, yeah, I dropped them down to about 60% and I haven't had that issue, issue since. Now when it comes to 300, uh, yeah, you guys know that I'm rocking eight, I believe, I believe it's eight, eight XR15s. If you guys are wondering why I do XR15s, it's because I can slide them on the rails up there and move them to manipulate the light to get the best spread as possible. I do have uh, some uh, Aquatic Life T5 hybrid fixtures, which by the way, I have to replace the bulbs because they are starting to dim out on me. Um, I try to do it once a year. I'm a little bit behind, but uh, yeah, so T5 LED combo, my favorite for coral growth and works out pretty good. And this is pretty dusty. Everything's dusty down here. Story of my life. And uh, yeah, naked tank, you guys know. I wish I could show you the eel. Kinda, I don't think I can. He's, there's part of his body around this dirty tank. Why don't you clean the glass for your update video? I don't know. I forgot. So that's part of his body. He's a, he's a, I don't know what he is. He's a yellow head, moray eel. He's super cool looking. I have some pictures up on my Instagram if you want to really see what he looks like. Um, pretty cool dude. I feed him once a week and he chill. He does pretty well. Uh, also, if you guys are wondering, that blue linky starfish, still rocking, man. I think it's like six years now, almost seven years. What's up, Bertha? You just, you can just keep your fins going. Um, and then, uh, yeah, he's still rocking, so that starfish is, is moving. So, uh, moving down here, we have our chiller, and we have the, oh, you're gonna, oh, here comes my gimbal acting a fool again. Uh, we have the Avast Marine Calc Stir, which, by the way, is still offline. I am submitting the information for the pump to be fixed through Neptune, but uh, yeah, that's the Calc Stir. I use that in conjunction with uh, the Geo's calcium reactor between the both, I really don't have any issues, but because I don't have a lot of coral in the system anymore, I'm actually doing pretty well with just the calcium reactor. Um, yeah, that's one of, the, one of the downsides of selling all your damn coral. But uh, yeah, gotta get the camera here. Calcster, which will be back in stock. We have the Refugium with a bunch of Chato. We have the Niles Quantum 300 with uh, kind of a drain line that goes over to the Avast Marine. Um, collection bin which has a sensor on it which lets me know when it gets full and actually turns the skimmer off which is really nice and then of course my filter socks need to be changed calcium reactor all that good stuff i only run carbon in one of these chambers and two return pumps of course one for the main display and the uh, uh ultra view ultraviolet light um from aqua uv so that return pump covers both of those and then i have a return pump that takes care of the low boys and the uh the tank there so uh, let's go and see what else other equipment I got here. Of course, the Trident, you guys know, the Apex, and my, I organized this. It's really, really good now. I mean, this is this is perfect. Um, yeah, so if you guys want any tips on organizing your your uh, wiring, uh, definitely hit me up. I, I'm just a genius on that. Uh, when it comes to the calcium reactor, we have the uh, carbon doser, which is on a, I don't know, is that 10 pound? I think it's a 10 pound tank. Either way, it needs to be replaced because here we go. Here comes my gimbal because it is almost empty. Now I do run two, or I do keep two um, CO2 tanks. I have this one and then I have a smaller one. So when this one dies, I can, pl I can put the smaller one on. It can hold me over you know, for weeks if I have to while I get this one filled up. And uh, yeah, so Trident's good to go. I'm gonna have to calibrate that. I'm almost on my next box, so I'm gonna take care of that. And then of course the Avast Marine um, net cleaner for the Niles, which is really nice and it goes well with the collection bin. Man, my camera's being a fool today. So that's the sump, it is dirty, needs to be uh, taken care of per usual. And uh, yeah, let's go and move on. So as you guys know, this is the tub here. I am running um, Kessel Lighting. Ooh, boy. So that's pretty good setup. I really love 
the Kessel over this tub. I haven't had Radions over them yet, over the tub yet, which is kind of making me want to get the tub for the other one, but we'll see on that. Um, but either way, Kessels work perfectly for this, and they're at about 80%. So really like the Kessel setup, and then you know I have the 3D printed um, universal mounts for the power supplies and stuff like that, so it keeps them nice and organized. Ooh, there we go. So yeah, speaking of 3D printing, let's go to move on. I got a few printers down right now, as I mentioned before. My camera's acting, I, can't, I, I can almost not put it at a certain angle where it's not going to work. Let me see if I can back up here. Um, yeah, so I got a few printers down. This one just had to be replaced. The high end there, this one needs a new bed, which I've ordered all that stuff. Uh, they're moving parts, man. They, I mean, these things, people ask me, have they paid for themselves? Yes, I mean, they pay for themselves extremely, extremely fast. I mean, you gotta think, this is the fifth printer. This is the fourth printer I've ever owned. These guys have paid for themselves 50 times over. So if I have to put like 60 bucks in to fix three printers, four printers, that's fine. I mean, they are rocking. I do have to make some adjustments and, and, and kind of recalibrate things, recalibrate probes or like uh, bed leveling and, and change out some of the wheels and just things that wear down. Again, they're, they run 24 seven and uh, they just get worn out. Things happen. But either way, they have paid for themselves. They are fully automated. These are not your basic Ender 3 Pros. Uh, these are about $1,000 a piece when it comes to being fully upgraded. And uh, that's kind of how I get away with running them so much and, and with minimal maintenance. Now, moving over here, uh, this is kind of my coral cutting bench. I keep my supplements here, which I'll go over in just a second. And uh, this is this is going to be a longer video than I thought. I've I'm not even halfway through this yet. Well, close. And I also use it to work on my printers, all that kind of stuff. Um, also, I set orders aside that need uh, additional filament or something I'm waiting for. But yeah, it's my fragging bench. This is the saw. Somebody asked how I clean this stuff. I just take it out back and run the hose through it when it's not winter time. If it's summer, if it's during the winter, I'll go upstairs and try to clean it in the tub. But either way, that's kind of how I take care of it. When it comes to supplements back here, um, I'm gonna move some stuff around. Um, I basically dose twice a week. I mix things up just so I don't dose so much at one time. But we have the uh, Chato Grow from um, Brightwell Aquatics. I have potassium, Acropower, Acrobutual Seed, and Dr. Tim's Eco Balance. Now, when it comes to the seed and the Eco Balance, I only do it about once a month because uh, it it just seems like my tank likes it. But then sometimes, if my nutrients get too low and you start dosing stuff like that, uh, you can I feel like it, it feeds Dino. It could be just me, but I find that uh, if I'm rocking really low nutrients because I'm not paying attention or something else is going on and I dose these bacteria, I can have a little bit of an issue. But it might, again, it might just be, by, by, it might just be me. Okay, so we're back. My camera turned off. I don't know when it did, but it did. So either way, I am uh, dosing strontium here. And because my ICP test said that I was pretty low, so I went ahead and got some of that. Um, I definitely got to get some more. I am also dosing the iodine here. Uh, I think it's like six drops is what I got going on. On top of that, I do have aqua vitro fuel, which is in the refrigerator. And uh, I dose that again twice a week. So that's pretty much it. If you want an in-depth video on everything that I dose, I might already have one, given that there's 800 videos on the channel. But I can make that again per request if you guys uh, want that. All right. I know somebody requested how do I... Uh, schedule the lighting between all three tanks. I will uh, do that video this week if, if not today. So moving over here This is kind of where we move into the 3d printing stuff if You guys are wondering why I'm talking faster than usual is because I only have what five minutes left on this camera's uh, Worth of uh, recording time and I gotta get this done. So this is where I keep uh, Filament rolls that are open and kind of just not on a current printer and Then I have a few more over here that I keep now um, I haven't came down haven't started the printers for the day yet. I got to get down uh, Down here. I got to get after this video I got to start uh, putting orders back on the printers because I kind of just doing this early and uh, Yeah, so we got the two under fives again All of these are upgraded fully automated raspberry Pis, bed leveling the whole nine yards uh, This one here that's actually currently printing a frag rack I need to fix the z-axis on it because i'm getting a little bit of wobble uh, it could be of uh, various things i mean i don't need to get into it now but either way it needs some work uh, everything else is pretty good when it comes to these printers if you're wondering where the 16th is here or the one on the top right that is actually upstairs in my office where i do my test print so here's the first set of printers moving over to the second set uh you can see that we have these two that are missing which are on the floor and uh this one i woke up to this this morning so all my cameras adjusting this happens not too often but uh, sometimes when I'm having an issue with a print as you can see I let it run last night and uh, the print failed essentially what happens is it 
it basically got high enough where it caught on to the fan duct. At that point, it, it, it basically self-destructed and the printer shut off. It ripped everything apart, and uh, for me to fix this, I just gotta go and print out some new parts and replace it and kind of do some uh, testing with the probe and recalibrating to make sure it's good to go. But that happens sometimes when a print fails, it's just, it's just part of the game. It's not, again, it's not too often, maybe, you know, this happens to a printer maybe once a year. I mean, it, it's that, uncommon but sometimes it fails and uh, it's just the way it is um, these are the micro swiss hot ends i have them on the majority of the printers over here but they are uh, becoming a little bit of an issue when it comes to uh, seeping filament out the bottom here uh, on the neck so i uh, i'm replacing them actually with the stock ender threes which are relatively cheap but they don't have that problem they do have a feed problem to a certain extent but uh, yeah, so I'm kind of bummed because those are like $70 a piece and I bought a ton of them and they're all having the same issues. Even if I take them apart, clean them and put them back together, they do still eventually leak uh, the fluid or the filament and uh, it's bumming me. Even though uh, putting a bunch of temp to them and put them, squeeze them down with vice grips, they still end up leaking. Uh, it could just be sheer amount of printing. So if you have a, a hot end that you really like, that you want to share, get out of here. Um, I'm happy to try some new stuff fix this and uh yeah so if you're wondering about the plastic a lot of you guys um ask like why is there a bunch of plastic here what the heck's going on well i don't want to breathe this stuff in it is plastic a lot of people say it's not toxic well guess what anything plastic is probably toxic so i'm backing up so i could show you i have big old exhaust fans i'm actually going to put a second one in here at some point maybe uh but the one seems to be fine i have uh three of them here in the fish room i think yeah three and uh they all come through and they blow out the door here which has three massive holes i have to buy a new door when i leave but it is what it is i already told them about it but so i i'm always moving air out of here i think these are like three or four hundred cfm or something and then i have a one over there by the fish room by the uh low boys so i'm pumping a ton of air down here my humidity even with all the water and everything going on it's about 40 percent 45 percent all year long down here which is really good uh because because I don't, you know, I don't obviously don't want a lot of hum humidity and, and printers and all sorts of stuff going on. So with the three exhaust fans and the central air that's blowing down here all the time, it's uh, it's really nice. It's actually not that bad. Now during the winter time, it actually works out pretty good because the heat of the tanks being about 79 degrees, 79.5, all that heat rises throughout the rest of the house. So I really, for almost half the year, I don't have to run my heater or my AC because it just it heats the house. I mean, it's still cold. Like, it's not comfortably cold. If somebody comes over, they're like, man, it's ice cold in here. Well, put a jacket on. <laughs> either way, uh, it's really nice to kind of have everything down here that just rises through the house. But either way, I am getting pretty close to the end of my storage. Uh, over here, I've got the kids' stuff. You know, bikes, they like playing down here. and Just extra filament and everything. Um, well, what was extra filament? It was really difficult for some time there. To, let me go this way. To actually get some filament and uh, and keep up with orders. But either way, guys, that's about it for the video. I'm out of time, out of space for whatever reason on this phone. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the longer update video. If you have any questions or anything you want me to make a video on specifically, feel free to put that stuff in the comment section. If you want to support this channel, uh, head over to fishofhex.com. There's a bunch of coral on there. Well, a decent amount. And, uh, of course, 3D printed items. So I will see you guys later with another video. All right? Peace.